Mom, you only me alone. Down somewhere? Mom, so he's picky on me. If you know your party's extension, please dial it now. Houston, we have a problem. I'm sick of all this complaining <gasps> all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Hi, listeners. Welcome back to Multitasking in Heels. We are your hosts, Liz and Lindsay, and thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, We're so excited to bring you our guest, our very dear friend of both of ours, Gretchen Fiscaldo, who's going to talk to us um, about diversity and inclusion in the workplace and her sort of journey, how she's seen that evolve over her career. Um, So welcome to the podcast, Gretchen. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Um, So as you know, we always kick off our episodes with our highs and lows or pump and flat moments of the week. So um, would you do the honors and and kick us off with your pump and flat moments of the week? Sure. Be happy to. So um, my uh, pump moment, I start with a positive. So Tuesday was my, my sister's birthday and we never get to celebrate birthdays because like we're one, one, we're four kids and we all live one in Puerto Rico, Orlando, Philly, and here in Midfield. And we got, because of 2020, now we're so accustomed to Zoom and we got able to celebrate her birthday. And she is our favorite, <laughs> all of us. We love her most. We love her more, first and foremost. And it was so good. And she's the sweetest thing on, on earth. And we got, we I got a cake for her and my sister got a cake from her and her husband and it was amazing. And we ended up chatting for like an hour and a half and we had the best wow. time and we didn't argue. We did the chocker. Where does she, so, where does she live? She lives in Philly. Aww. And she just where does she the, yeah. um, fit in the birth range? So she's the second. And um, like I said, and she's our favorite. And I'm the youngest. And then my brother is like two sisters, my brother and myself. So, um, and it was really cool. And the, the kids participated Aww. and the husband. Yes. And uh, Jim also sat there and we were all speaking <laughs> Spanish. And he, he took one for the team. <laughs> and he just smiled. That's so sweet. No and I think, yeah, that's 2020, 2020 right? right? Like you, you know, you, you try, try to make the best of the moments that you can just in a different way. And I think that we appreciate those interactions with our family and our friends so much more now because they're so far and few in between. Yes, so it was really, really fun. And then my my low point, and which I thought it was going to be the great one. Uh, my flat moment was I actually scheduled a mammogram, kind of like going there, and uh, and that was a good like like for for me like screening and prevention is is key and self care is so important, especially like nowadays that we do so much for everyone. Long story short, I go there and I enter the room. And there's like two technicians and one of them looks very, very young and inexperienced. <gasps> and she goes, and she goes and says to me, well, I'm in training and I like to do the procedure today. And I just looked at her and I was like, hmm, how? Because usually when <laughs> there's a cashier in Shaw's and she's new, I'm all for it. I'm like, buddy, take your time. Life is good. Oh. If it's so fun, Starbucks and it's a new barista, no big deal. Mess up my coffee. No one died. What a mother. I'm like, Arr! so listen, ladies. I'm sorry, the gentlemen that might be listening to this. So I was like, okie dokie. And she had to do it. Three oh my God. <laughs> By the third, I was calling uncle. I was like, <laughs> I was closing my eyes. I almost cried, but I didn't want to feel bad. I didn't want to hear because she was like trying, like she was sweating and she was so uncomfortable. So was I. And I was with my mask on. I was looking at the old lady looking at me, the experienced one that's so suffering. Oh my God. And I, I was like, this is the last try. And then she possibly got it. Who knows? And then she goes like, if we didn't get it, right? We call you back for more. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll take my chances. chances. Oh, oh my, my God. God. You are the most brave mm-hmm. woman. You didn't plan that right. I should have said no, but then she, anyway, so yeah, that happened. So that was a pretty flat I moment. mean, for, for <laughs> any men listening, getting a mammogram is like an ancient torture device. Like if you want to get prisoners in Guantanamo to talk, throw their boobs into a mammogram thing and squish that shit because it is so fucking painful. <laughs> 
Yes. Oh, I have my theory. Like, yes. So uh, I have my theory. Like, if if men had to do that with, you know, this process will have been improved tremendously. Mm-hmm. And I did say that to them as we tried this for the third time. Anyway, so yeah, that's enough of a mammogram experience. Mm-hmm. Winning, oh winning, twenty twenty. <laughs> Um, that's good flash. yes what about you all right, right Liz, Liz how was your week, week? <laughs> um my week was good um it actually why did I even say that? I know I was like you're lying I know your week wasn't good <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't good but I'm trying to like you know be positive about things um so my pump moment was that we watched the movie Safety last night. So you know how you're always looking for something for the family to watch together and there's never anything that's appropriate? Disney Plus, the movie Safety, so good, family appropriate, PG, maybe PG-13, uh, based on a true story about this guy who was... Um, full right, I think, to Clemson, had to take on his little brother and sneak him into the dorms because their mom was a drug addict. Oh, my gosh. And talk about tears. Like, I ended up bawling. And Brian's like, are you okay by the end of it? And I was like, are you not? <laughs> like, um, but... It was so good. And at the end, during the credits, they had, like, Oprah and all this, like, real news clips of the real guy and his brother. And it was just, it was great. It made you feel good. It was a good family movie. So I highly recommend for all families, um, football, great feeling, good just very heartwarming heartwarming um good for the holidays um one of those movies like ruby or remembering the titans where it's like team spirit Mm -hmm. and the whole team gets behind him and knowing that it's like a true story too it was just fabulous and that's like we watched that last night on our friday night movie night Mm -hmm. and it was a great way to end a ship all week Yes, yes, that, that sounds, sounds like a nice way to end the week with your family and join something together. together. Yes. And then my flat moment, once you turn 40, ladies, I'm not sure what happens, <laughs> but there is something that happens internally where my clock is off. And I know a few of our friends have this problem, but I cannot sleep. And... I love sleep. (laughs) So there's a huge problem right there, as you can see. So at like 3.58, my eyes like are wide awake. And I was like, okay, I'll get up and I'll go to the bathroom and I'll go back to bed. This didn't happen. So I was, I've been up since 3.58. Oh my God. Yeah, has it been, been like because this happens to my husband like where he'll just start waking up at like 4 17 like every morning like for like four mornings in a row and it's literally like the same time it's like that is that what's happening with you yep oh my god i on the other hand can sleep anytime anywhere like on a folding chair in the middle of like world war three i would be all like light <laughs> i know it's a gift <laughs> you are like my husband yeah i, I know <laughs> I swear that Dan and I are the same. Yes. And Brian and Liz are the same. It is frightening. Yep. How oh, that sucks, Liz. I don't know what has happened. And I am just like, Brian came downstairs and he felt so bad. He's like, Was I snoring? Oh. Because that's usually oh why I wake up in the middle of the night. Was he? <laughs> Yeah, that's a great question, Rachel. And I said, actually, no. Last night you weren't. I just was up. You know, stress can also do that to you, but also the 40 year old woman body can do that to you. And I was just like, no, I was just up. 
So I got a lot of stuff done though. Very and productive. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. So there you go. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry Liz. Liz. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> My friend Liz over here brought me, I, um, the other thing is I didn't have coffee in the house. So that was the worst because I love coffee. So I was up from four to nine without coffee. So I like texted Liz, was like, like an addict and was like, you have to bring me some coffee. So she did. Yes. yes. Liz, Liz to the rescue. rescue. <laughs> so what was your own um, class? So my pub moment was I actually had a very positive parent-teacher conferences for my little ones, Avery and Brady, who are in third grade. And I don't know about you ladies, but not all of my parent-teacher conferences have always been positive. Gretchel? <laughs> oh, right. So, yes, I'm the expert in those, like, emails and yeah. calls. Yes. <laughs> Yes, no, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. So, um, so, for example, last year when I went to Brady's second grade, when Dan and I went to his second grade parent teacher conference at the beginning of the year, his teacher was like, I don't have any concerns about him academically. He's a really bright kid. And then she goes, But he makes these noises sometimes. And I'm like, Oh, no, he's doing it here. And he, she goes, That almost sounds like a cat. And I was like, fuck. So he went through this phase where he pretended he was a cat and he would meow all around the house. Rawr, rawr. And if you said something to him that he didn't like, he would go hiss. And he was apparently also doing that at school, not recognizing it was wildly inappropriate. Um, so we had to talk to him about that. But um, he was like the Tiger King before the Tiger King yeah, was cool. Completely. Um, so. This year, the, both the parent-teacher conferences went well. I mean, I'm sure the bar is really low, and I will take full advantage of that all day, every day. Um, and I think one of the silver linings of this whole remote learning and the cohorts is that the classes are smaller. So my kids who have a tendency to be easily distracted, they can't do that anymore because, one, there's nowhere to hide, and two, they can't touch anything. They can't get close to anyone. So, like, in a way, it's helping with their focus and attention. Um, but they're both doing well academically and socially, which is all I can remember. I don't really care so much for the academic piece. They're in third grade, but the social piece I do care about. And so that's good. Um, Avery's teacher told me a story um, about Avery. She's like, she's such a funny little girl. I'm like, I know. And so I guess they were all doing their like reading and she, the teacher went around the room and Avery, you know, just to check on them. And Avery was reading a book about animals. So she told her teacher that she wants to be a zookeeper when she grows up. But she said, I only want to do it during the week because on the weekend I need my me time. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. She sounds like your mom. Exactly. I mean, Apple does not fall far from the tree, ladies. So that was my pop moment. Um, my flat was my poor, poor Brady had to get a COVID test last Friday because he got sent home from his remote learning program with a cough. And that means you can't come back until you get a COVID test. So the poor kid, we quarantined him in his room all weekend long. Um, I know this episode will air after Christmas, but at the time we were buying our Christmas tree and he was super bummed that he couldn't come with us to pick out the tree because he always wants to make sure we get the biggest one we can find. And he was so worried I wasn't going to find the biggest one on the lot. Um, so I ended up getting him um, a tabletop tree for his room to decorate just to make up for the fact that he couldn't come with us. We made him wear a mask coming downstairs and he you know I, I refused to let him sit by himself for meals though I was like I'm not doing that to him so I sat with him and you know I don't know Dan but whatever I'm not gonna make my kid eat a meal by himself all the rest of us are at a table but we were all we decorated the tree like all wearing masks it was ridiculous um I mean he's totally fine but it's just as you guys know it's that whole domino effect so he has a COVID test I have to keep all the kids home from school when they should have been in school on their in-person days. We'll head to miss basketball. We, you know, so it's just, uh, you know, we did the right thing. I don't feel bad about it, but it's, again, like, it's just really, really frustrating that, you know, our kids are so negatively affected by this. So that was, that was my flat moment. Um, so anyway, ladies, let's get into it, shall we? Um, so, Gretchel, we're very excited for you to just talk about your career and diversity and inclusion specifically, um, but would love for you, I know we know that you participated in a panel recently at your company about career risk-taking and diversity. So, uh, before we get into the diversity piece, do you mind like setting up kind of the career risk-taking piece a little bit? I think our listeners would find that really interesting. 
Sure, sure. So thank you. And uh, the reason I was recruited for this panel, it was uh, one, actually two reasons. It was the um, October. You cannot hear? No, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. October is the uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, Month Awareness. So October, usually my company and, and my previous employers always have like the celebrations to celebrate Hispanic culture and to teach everyone about Hispanic and, and it's pretty cool. So I am involved in the like uh, Latinx uh, organization of my company. So they feature me as a, you know, to be a panelist. So two, I, in the midst of this crazy pandemic, I also uh, changed roles within my company. So I went from a national team to a local team and different role together, new leadership team. And uh, at the moment, it was a little daunting because how, first of all, how do I prepare for an interview during this pandemic? Like, honestly, like my mindset is not there. Um, my kids are always home. And it's just, it was so hectic, especially at the time that I interviewed, which is a period of May, June. So we're just in the midst of it and we're all home and we're just sick of each other. So, um, so the end, I ended up going through, you know, interview process and landing this role. So that's why I was feature. And before I get into like how I got there, I remember um, I had to do a prepping session with the organizers of the panel. And I started going through, well, you know, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a free believer of career mapping and finding a sponsor and really figuring out the next position to check a few boxes, like a new division, a new product line, a new role altogether, like marketing or education or sales, whatever. So my coach said, no, 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 tell your story. Just tell your story. And that's how kind of feel my story ties into restaking in career and diversity because diversity and inclusion is what brought me here. I'm from Puerto Rico, as you, most of the listeners probably know, I born a race uh, and I moved to uh, actually Verily, Massachusetts of, of all places when I, as soon as I graduated from college from University of Puerto Rico. In college, I lived with my mom um, because the college was in our hometown and I came from very humble, you know, upbringing and single mom of four, like I mentioned before, like with four kids and um and I got recruited because of diversity and inclusion initiative. And the reason is because they didn't have diversity in, in back then it was Bell Atlantic, now it's Verizon. So again, this was 22 years ago. So they went to uh, University of Puerto Rico, they went to a job fair. I was so blessed and lucky that I put my resume there, somehow got called for an interview, passed the interview even when I was like truly broken English. And they flew me here in the middle of the winter and to interview me for like two days. I had no idea what hockey was, Bruins. I didn't know. <laughs> I lived in the island. All I did was like have fun, like come on and go to school. And so I remember looking back, I, I, it was a risk mm-hmm. just to leave everything behind. I didn't know anyone in Boston. What did your mom think? Not to cut you off, I'm just curious if she was supportive or scared or... My mom was like, it's a really good job. Like my mom is all about for her kids. Um, She didn't have much growing up and she gave us all she had. And she's like, I give you education. You go and you conquer the world. And she's super like strict and super firm and super... But she's also like our biggest cheerleader, but it's that, that silent, stoic cheerleader that basically she's like, you screwed up, you have to face me, type mm-hmm. of thing. <laughs> so, and off I went, and I remember, I didn't know anyone. The only person I knew was my recruiter from, she was African-American, and she is, sorry, and she was still good friends to this day. She was the one that really led this diversity initiative, and I'm going on a tangent, but really quickly. So, she lived in Washington, D.C., so when I when I came here, I didn't know anyone. So I only knew, like, they hired this, like, real estate person to 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 basically drove me around apartments for me to get an apartment, and they sent me a winter location package. And I remember landing into, Los, landing into Boston Logan Airport with two suitcases and a huge big dream. Aww. And I was like, all right, this is it. And it was such a risk-taking back then adventure, right? Because young and ambitious. And then 
I remember thinking about the power of diversity because diversity was what brought me here. And, and how, like, so that's the story that I told in the panel and how now diversity is so important and being inclusive is so important. But more than anything, this risk taking, and this will resonate, I hope, with everyone that listens to this, that when you take a risk, it's, it could be a moving to a different country, which is a big, bold move, of course, or becoming a mom or landing a new role. I do have, de- I have developed these three basic principles that I have carried through all my life. And then number one is belief in myself. So believe in yourself and believe that you got the books, the, the goods to back it up. Two, be brave. Be brave. Be brave to take that step. Be, be brave to, to, to take any role or to uh, raise your hand for that community project. And three, be compassionate in yourself mm-hmm. because you're going to mess up because I, I come short every day and I had to face myself in the mirror and be super compassionate. And that's kind of what I talk in the panel, like as an introduction of you had to take a risk in landing this new role was super stressful, but I had to believe that it was the right time, but even it wasn't, and I had the goods to back it up. And two, I had to be brave to raise my hand, to talk to Jim about, hey, I need this time to interview. Mm-hmm. I, And once I get the role, I had to be compassionate because change is hard, especially nowadays. Yes, very much so. so. And, I and I think, think so that's kind of how I, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. When, when we were, when we chatted, chatted a couple, couple days ago, ago kind of preparing, preparing for this episode, episode you, you said, said something, something that really struck with both Lindsay and I that, that you, know, you know, not, not taking, taking a risk is taking a risk because you, you end, end up complacent, complacent, and, in and, in complacent and in the same place. And, and you, you, you know, you don't, don't experience, experience personal, personal growth or professional growth or, or whatever, whatever it might be. be. And, and I just, just, you know, just now what you said, it reminded me of something that my cousin Julie was the career coach said on her episode that when you don't know what to do, just say yes to something. Just say yes to one thing. And it could be like you said, a community, you know, project or, you know, making a new friend or career change, but just say yes to something because that's how you move forward in life. Yes. And I, I do think that we, it starts with us. It starts with every single, it starts with your inner power mm-hmm. and it starts with believing in yourself and, and calming those vo- voices and timing them. Those voices that say, oh, it's not the right time or really Gretchen, like your kids are home and you're about to get a new puppy. Like, what are you thinking? And, you know, and me saying, you know what? I think it's the right time. I know I'm going to struggle, but I have the goods to back mm-hmm. it up and I have to be brave. And when I mess up, I have to be compassionate, yep, yep. especially for myself. So that's kind of, we talk about the panel and then we open up to awesome questions that if they are related, they were related to diversity. And so definitely we can, we can jump back into that topic now. If that's yeah, right. no, we would, we would love, love to, to kind, kind of hear, hear you walk, walk us through, through your, your career, career from the from diversity and inclusion perspective, perspective and, and how, how you've seen things change, change you, know, you know, over the past, past couple decades. decades. And, and if you've, if you've ever, ever been in a position, position you, know, you know, where maybe, maybe a company, company was just, they, they weren't, weren't really committed, committed to it. It, it was, was just, just, you know, kind of, kind of smoke and mirrors versus, versus you, know, you know, companies that are really committed, committed to a diversity and inclusion program. program. Of course. So um, at the very beginning, I remember when I first landed here, again, 22 years ago, um, I was super young, single, like really broken English. My accent was like even w- like stronger than now, shocker. So, and I remember feeling very different. And and I remember my my uh, recruiter saying, this is what we brought you here because you have to show them what different looks like. So it was a little bit more of like, you are the change. You are the icon. You, you're gonna show like truly what diversity looks like. And back then we were trying to reach out to um, the Latino market in Lawrence and um, East Boston and Boston and, and Lowen, etc. So that was for me was such a like important moment, but that defined diversity as you are different. Uh, right. You speak yeah. Spanish and mm-hmm. you have an accent. And at that time, that was very defined. Like diversity is defined by where you're from, how you look like, what God you praise and sexual orientation. And, um, however, now through, I, I have, neg- I have kind of changed the industries, employers, roles, have become a mom, have moved to midfield. I have seen such a beautiful transformation of that definition. And at least 
personally, that's what I have experienced. Everyone experience might be different, but now diversity is truly a bigger conversation. Um, it's no longer of how you look or how you sound. It's your experiences. It's millennials, you know, uh, working with people that are 70 years old in the workforce. Like that is diversity right there. It's uh, experiences. Um, actually believes, like, do you believe in climate change in? You don't. Then how are you going to package your merchandise? Like, how are you going to transport it? Like, if, like, let's have that conversation. And, and also diversity is not about, again, how you look, how you sound, where you're from. It's actually how are you available to or willing to be vulnerable and to speak up and say, hey, I, dif- I differ of this plan or this strategy, or if you're working in a community of, you know, this initiative that we're going through because of this. And it's all based on your belief sets and it's all based on your experiences and, you know, how to be from Puerto Rico mm-hmm. to do right. that. And um, so I believe that that transformation, it's beautiful. And I hope that it continues to become the norm as we see diversity as it is. What, what- was, was it, it hard, hard for you, Gretchel, Gretchel when, when you were recruited and they were asking you about that and saying that you were purposely recruited because of your culture and your skin color and because you have an accent and that it was diversity back then did mean person of color. And I think a lot of times people still... So this is like a two-partner question. People are still thinking that it means a person of color. So that's where I wanted to key in on what you just said, that it's not just that. Definitely. So at the beginning, I, well, there's, there's two ways that I could have reacted. And I think it's all about your inner power or your set of your value, your value set. I remember me thinking that I represented my family and I represented my country and my little island that I love. And I was so proud of like you, of all of us, you chose me to show like what we are all about. Let's do it. Um, so, but I have been coached kind of all my life through my education and my, my, my upbringing that you, you are who you are represent more than you and you have to carry yourself as such. So I believe that, Maybe that's what they saw when they hired me. And um, and I remember the most shocking experience that I had of all like cultural differences, no speaking the language properly, that the only Hispanic people in that building of like over 500 people were in the cafeteria serving food. Yep. yep. The only time I was able to speak Spanish. Wow. When I was in the cafeteria. And I remember being like, this has to change. And my recruiter kept like, no, well, this is what we're doing. And they put me in different um, programs to really welcome bias. And they, they, then they bought more talent. Then they went back to Puerto Rico and recruited more talent, which I'm so glad that they did. Um, and then I got involved in the Hispanic Super Organization of Verizon. And then I was able to kind of like work with New York chapter and kind of like get more enriched of how t- can we truly help back then Verizon to become more diverse. Again, this was 22 years ago. Um, and your second question is, I forgot some question. Oh, about the, the definition of the broader definition. So I do believe, because I see it every day, that we continue to look at diversity as that definition from the past. Mm-hmm. I do believe, especially with, uh, with all these... Um, very painful experiences that we went through with 2020 with the, you know, obviously racial discrimination and how our country reacted to it. And I believe that we are, we have, we are at a pivotal moment in, in, in corporate America because those incidents have made everyone more alarmed and more conscious of like, we need to be more careful. We have to train more people. We how to go at it, but also in our community as well. So I do believe that we'll still continue to define diversity as if all definition, but however, hopefully we can continue to transform it and that's going to take some time. Yeah. yeah. And have, have you, you ever, ever felt, felt in your, in your career, career like, like um, um, 
subconscious bias, bias against, against you because, because you, know, you know you have an, an accent, accent or, or you're from Puerto Rico, Rico or anything or, or you felt, felt it overtly at all in your your, your career. career. So I remember at the very beginning, I still do this, and um, and this is super, I'm going to be super vulnerable, so bear with me. And sometimes, like back, especially when I first started working here, my um, English wasn't that fantastic, right? So truly broken English. And um, and I, it, it's okay. And I, I, at the end of the day, I was kind of bilingual, you know, so to speak, like, you know, 100%, you know, Spanish and I don't know, 75, maybe English. And uh, I don't remember one of the uh, people, people from my team sending an email, making fun of my, my written English, and she sees me by mistake. Oh, oh my and God. And I was crushed, man. I was like, but I was crushed. And, but more than, I wasn't humiliated. I feel sad. Mm-hmm. But then that is, that's, that's her problem. problem. That is not because I spoke, that is yeah, her yeah. problem. And I remember talking to one of my, my mentors and back then, and, and she's like, you know what? Just ask for help. Don't be mad. Just ask for help. And so, and I have learned, and I learned this early in my career and had taken me to so many places, opened so many doors. And I remember just going and, and we, we called a meeting. I didn't talk about the incident, even when every, everyone got the email. Everyone knew that I had it, that I received it. I just said, I just need your help to all of them. Wow. And it was over people. And I said, I just need your help. I knew I'm struggling. I just really need your help. Wow. That must, that must have been, have been really that, tough. Yes. And I remember a lot of the people there just all, all of a sudden got disarmed. Yeah. 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 Just like, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I have used that. But I could have gone so, like, I was young, immature, inexperienced. And this lady that wasn't mature in her, you know, in her professional career, She's like, no, no, don't be combative. Just ask for help. You and mm-hmm. she have had high, high, high EQ. Yes. yes. And gave, gave that, that to you mm-hmm. as, as a tool. tool and, and you reacted, reacted so well. well. Yep. yep. And like, like you, you said, said, you disarmed the group. group. And what a way, way to do that mm-hmm. at your age. Right. right. To, to, I'm, I'm sure, sure that that group was just like, like whoa, where, where did this girl come from? from? Mm-hmm. I and mean, I was coached, like it came, didn't come from me. And, and I was like, I don't know how to do that. And, and, and I was obviously, there's so many nervous and, and I have grown ever since, right? Like uh, professionally and I have polished my message, but people are always willing to help. And, and it goes back to our children, how we teach mm-hmm. them. And you have a kid that is different or you have a coworker that, that is, is struggling with ideas or with putting a plan together or so they all need our help. I need help. And so that was kind of like those times that I've like, really, I learned a lot. Um, but I do believe that diversity, it won't work unless you have inclusion. Mm-hmm. And that is like the key to diversity. And that inclusion part is what I, I right now I'm in a project for work and to work with our local team and our national team to work on that eye of inclusion, of I belong, of I have a voice, of I am home. So that's what I'm working on. And what is beautiful about this inclusion aspect is that it applies to all of us and applies in our communities, applies in our schools, in our mom groups, Mm -hmm. and in this podcast, at everywhere, because if you're home, if you feel like you have a voice, even if people don't agree with your opinions, but people value you for who you are, then then this diversity of expanded diversity definition is what is truly going to pay dividends and transform what we're trying to do on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah I, think I think that's, that's hugely important. important. It's, it's one, one thing, thing to bring, bring a group of you know diverse, diverse people in a room, room but, but to your point, point, if not everybody, everybody has an equal, equal voice, voice an equal say, say then, then not, not everybody's, everybody's included. included. They, they might, might, might as well, as well be, be outside, outside of the room. Of the room. Um, yeah. And, and I, don't, I, mean, I mean, how, so the, the, the project, project you're working on, that sounds really interesting. interesting. So, so how are you guys kind of formulating a, a plan, plan to, to, to make, make sure, sure that you're committed, committed to, to inclusion? inclusion? 
So we are, um, we're in the initial steps, so initial like uh, aspects of our project. So we just did a, like a presentation and um, it's a quick video that I can send you the link and you can post it. It's like a powerful video about diversity, about diverse of like belief systems and, and just have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And then um, we send like a quick poll in a, in a live Zoom call about, you know, what's your definition of diversity? Like, do you feel like you have a voice? Do you feel like the, the leadership team values your uh, your voice, values your opinion? Do you be, do you feel you belong? Mm -hmm. And uh, and based on those those answers, uh, and then of course we I asked um, what what do you like to have from us? Because I'm not by myself. Like we are a team working on this. So do you what like what activities, what workshops, what do you want? Because if you if if we if we need to help the team to be comfortable speaking up, then okay. If we need to help the team to be to open to all their ideas, to really like embrace this out the box thinking, or to kind of like role play how to challenge each other in a way that it's appropriate and 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 that's happening by the way. We have an awesome team, but we can always try to be better. So what type of tools do we need in our toolkit to be better at mm -hmm. that? Um, and then, of course, um, more like once we hopefully will be able to get together next year in person because we all of this has been, you know, remotely and, you know, Zooms and all the whatnot. Then what what can we do as a team that will bring us together? Um, is that something giving back to the community? Mm -hmm. um, and then tie that to diversity, right? Like, what what do we want to do? Um, so kind of like, again, being inclusive, it's learning from our audience. What do we need from, what do they need from us and kind of put a plan together to to deliver? So a lot of really asking for or asking questions, get the information, et cetera. So that's what we're working on right now. That's awesome. Um, what... How do you add diversity and inclusion into your parenting? So that is hard uh, because we, uh, like we, we mentioned, I share with you, of course, in our prep session, it's hard to talk about diversity when we live in this beautiful town. And, and I'm, I would not move. It's beautiful. And, um, but there's no diversity here. I mean, there's few, but, and again, the diversity that we live in, we have here, I don't believe that I, at least in my opinion, there's no eye of inclusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would agree. So that is a very difficult thing. So uh, we have done many things that we travel to Puerto Rico. And when we go that, when we go to Puerto Rico, we are like, we don't go to San Juan. We go to my hometown, which is in the West and it is a, t a small town. And, it's fun and they truly live, they truly see what I came from. They, you know, we go to my mom's house and where I grew up, et cetera. And um, we, I tried to do like things like last year and the year before, Joseph and I deliver food in Thanksgiving uh, for in this company in Boston and um, usually in Dorchester, right? And all these like uh, areas of high need. So that's something that he wasn't exposed to. Um, but more than anything, like we try to get together as a family twice a year. I would cover it. Obviously, we will only be able. We will only travel to Florida at once, but we try to do it twice a year. We rent a house, and we we just get together with all my family and all my 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 brother and my two sisters are married to Puerto Ricans as well, and it's kind of like a little Puerto Rico in that house and it's all loud and it's all music and it's fun and it's a ton of food. And that's very different. Like even for the language and the music that we hear and it's, so we, I try to do that that way. It's not enough to be honest with you. So I struggle with that on a daily basis, but, um, and I wish that we could do more and hopefully like once this pandemic, you know, it's over, we can, I can, open more doors for my kids to un understand that there's a world bigger than this. Right. right. I know yeah, it, is it is so hard, hard when we live in a town where kind of kind everybody, everybody looks, looks like a photocopy, photocopy of someone, someone else, essentially. essentially. Um, um, and, and I agree, I agree with you. I don't think, think there's, there's a lot of inclusion, inclusion 
here, here which, which is, is sad, sad and, and it's hard, hard to figure, figure out as a parent, parent how, how, how do you teach that, that if they're, they're not exposed to it on a daily basis? basis. But, you know, going, you know, going back, back to what you were saying, saying about having, having those conversations, conversations at work, work you, know, you know, how can we translate those conversations to home and in our community too? I think that's interesting. So what, how is parenting different here than in Puerto Rico? Like, because I feel like, I don't, I don't know. know. We, we tend, tend to be, be a little helicoptery sometimes, sometimes with our kids or micromanagey or, micromanage or whatever. Is it like that in Puerto Rico, Rico or is it like, it sounds, it sounds like tough love. love. Yeah. yeah. Is it is like, like, all right, go, go out, out don't, don't come, come back, back until, until the sun, sun goes, goes down. down. Good, Good luck. luck. <laughs> yes, exactly what it sounds like. And um, my mom is a super disciplinarian. To this day, I kind of fear her, love her, is like convicted. <laughs> and, uh, and she is super tough love, man. And I remember, like, my aunt is the same way, like, coming from, for example, like, I remember going on the stairs and my aunt was like, be careful because you're goofing around. If you fall, I'm going to hit you where your boo-boo is, like, basically. <laughs> and, I like, and I fell and she fucking did oh, it. And I'm like, what? Yeah, she's like, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> yes. And or one time, oh, my God. So this is like. Don't report me. But really quickly, we were in my driveway and Joseph didn't want to put his uh, seatbelt on. He was like probably like five. And I'm like, you have to put your seatbelt on it. He's no, 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 no. So I'm like, all right. So I was in my driveway, so super right. safe. So he was in the back seat and I accelerated yeah. and then I stopped yeah. the brakes and then he hit himself yeah. in the back. <laughs> That's my mom would do. Totally. Lesson, Lesson learned. learned. Right. <laughs> And then he's like, what? He was like adorable five-year-old. And so I, I texted my friends. I'm like, and my friends were like, that's a true Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So it's very like tough love, especially in my family. Mm-hmm. And when we, when we go to Orlando and, and my brother's there, my sister, Lina, the favorite one, is there. They, um, they don't mess around with the kids, man. They, when the kids start talking back to me, like my kids, their kids don't do it, but my kids do. Um, look at me. Yeah, so so when they, they like, like parents, back, my brother doesn't put up with that. No, my brother is like, stop right now. That's my little sister. You're oh. speaking to. Oh yeah. So it's great. When I go yes. <laughs> Joseph's William taking care of. That's right. Oh my God. But, yeah. Versus here, it's like, shush, shush. You cannot yell and you cannot throw anything at them obviously right. you can't <laughs> so yeah, yeah I, like I like the, the tough, tough level approach, approach. It's, it's, I've, I've tried, tried it, it but, but I think my kids are tougher than me so yeah, it's completely backfired that that <laughs> <laughs> you have it in your bones you see like anyway, it's like but it's it is very different and climate over there in Puerto Rico like right now everyone is in lockdown but basically like there's never snow like there's always good weather unless a hurricane or earthquakes <laughs> and then if you once you, if you're on their doors then don't go out but otherwise um it's fun it's just you're always outside it's old school mm-hmm. i think yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. More, more opportunity, opportunity to be outside, outside and, and just, just explore, explore and you know, you know not like, like here where we're trapped, trapped inside, inside with our kids, kids on their devices, devices all day every day <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, what, what is, is your, your biggest, biggest challenge as a working, as a working mom, mom? My biggest challenge has so many, mm-hmm. but let me give you the first one. And the number one always is that um, early, just recently, maybe maybe seven years ago, I realized and had this epiphany that there is no such a thing as carry as life work yep. balance. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. So everyone, if you think you have it, good for <laughs> you. Write a fucking book because it's not not totally. Like, so I have learned that this is career integration, career life integration. And, um, and it's okay. Sometimes my kids, my boys, my marriage takes the front seat mm-hmm. and as it should be like, that's my route. And sometimes work has to wait, man. And sometimes I cannot deliver the deadline or I have to work super late because not everyone is sleeping and I have to work on it. But there are sometimes that work takes the front seat too. And everyone, mm-hmm. you know what? And I think like Jim and I were just like you guys. We're both working parents. Uh, there's a lot of pressure that comes with it. And this pandemic, you know, really is makes everything worse, I believe, because we're in lockdown and we're together all the time. Mm-hmm. But sometimes work has to take the front seat and everyone has to be okay with that. And like when I 
to this new role. There's a lot of not only prepping for the interview, landing the job, really getting ready. Like it, it's just learning a new thing, a new product, everything in between. I just have to say, you know what, guys, you're on your own. Like I'm not cooking this mm-hmm. week or Jim, you're it. Or boys have cereal for dinner. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, and that's going to be okay. Yeah. And that yeah. guilt of mm-hmm. I'm not enough mm-hmm. is there. But it doesn't hunt me anymore. Oh, that's awesome. awesome. Because, because I do think, think yeah, yeah, as women, women and working women, women you, you feel, feel like, like you can't, can't ask for help because we're, we're expected to be able to, to, to do, do it all. all. That you, you should, should be able to prepare, prepare for your interview and put dinner on the table and do the laundry and do the, and it's just completely unrealistic. And going back to your, your comment earlier about compassion, um, you know, that has to translate into, into our personal lives too. Like we just give ourselves a break, you know, the world isn't going to fall apart if kids have cereal for dinner. No, and they'll like it better. Exactly. Yes. And and also, I believe that um, we have we have a a special uh, duty to also coach our employers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hey, dude, I'm struggling here. And like, uh, for example, when I was interviewing for this role, obviously everything is remote. So usually, when you interview, you get you you do your hair, you do your nails, mm-hmm. like you do that. You put the best suit on and you drive somewhere, fly somewhere, and you are on your own. You turn the you turn your phone off and you're it, and it's amazing. With this pandemic, everything is from home. Thank you very much. And um, so my interview was no no change, right? So it was from home too. So I was in my final interview, had my VP and, and my manager and another director and in the Zoom. And I remember telling Jim, hey, you cannot be in the house. I don't care what you do. You cannot be here with the boys. You have to go. So it was a three hour interview, like a panel. They gave me like a half an hour break in between. But it was pretty intense. Oh. So towards the end, who do I see in my house? And by the way, I was in the kitchen table because my my office is always a disaster. So I'm like, just, so all of a sudden I see my family coming in, my entire family coming in. And I'm there um, um, and they're asking me questions and I don't know. And it's a great role and I really want it. And all of a sudden I look at Jim, I'm like, what? And I go like this, go. And... He takes Joseph, somehow William stays in the house and he turns the TV on and he turns SpongeBob in the TV oh. in the living room. Yes, women. <laughs> and I have my BP on the Zoom looking at me going like this. And I was so nervous and they had to repeat the question and I was so upset. I was like, listen, guys, my family just show up. I don't know if you see it. But they are. So give me a moment. I just have to address this. I had no yeah. 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 So I step away from my computer, which was in my dining room. I mean, sorry, in my kitchen table. I have no dining room. It's like one whole place. And he's next to... So I was so, I was so nervous. So nervous. I didn't put mute or I didn't turn the video off because I was nervous. So I like... And thank God I had jeans on. Like, so I didn't have my pajama bottles. So, <laughs> Did that, and I Josh, said to William, "You did not, Gretchen. I did because that's what happened. No, yep. It's you like I mean, you Get, get the, the fuck out of here! here. <laughs> that is, I didn't say the F word oh because that is great. Because I don't know. What, I mean, I usually, guys, as you know, I will say it, but I was like, William, come on, says right now. So I yelled, and then I joined the meeting, and I see all of the faces. <laughs> and I go, oh, I didn't mute it. Okay, well, I was like, it is what right. it is. I'm like, this is like, I'm like, I remember saying, this is who you're getting. So I was like, this is it. And they were, so, oh my God. So I'm closing the interview and I'm like, anything else that I can let you? I'm, I mean, I can't let you know. I'm so sorry about my family. Austin in like and my director was like my my VP which is a nice guy and now we have now I know him and we have a great relationship he said it was kind of hilarious how you shoot you're so scared <laughs> <laughs> but, that's but that's reality, reality. And, and you know, you know what? what and I'm like life in COVID oh and I was like but then I talked to when I was hired and uh, I was like listen thank you very much for the opportunity like I really appreciate your compassion and and 
you know, that was a bad moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you guys still gave me the job, regardless of like, this is it. And I said, I'm a working mom. Mm -hmm. And I'm struggling. Like there are days that this is going to happen. And I mean, when I say that they already gave me the job, so they couldn't take it back. But it's a matter of I'm going to deliver for yes. you. I'm going to be a top performer. I'm going to be in projects. I'm going to be initiatives. I will deliver for you. But know that there are days that I'm going, my bandwidth is going to be spent mm -hmm. and that has to be okay. Yep. So yep. we have to do that for ourselves. Yes. And we have to teach our families, our kids, our husbands, and and our significant others or whoever that person is and our employers as well. Mm -hmm. It's as critical. So anyway, no, so exactly a little bit more right. of like, mm -hmm. I've seen it. Is, um, a topic we will be covering soon yes. on yeah. our yeah. podcast because, because it is a big, big huge topic, topic that it, uh, is being covered in a lot of magazines right now, now um, in, in the, the corporate, corporate world, world and working world, world for mothers and fathers, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mainly mothers. mothers. So, so it's, it's interesting that you brought this up. Yeah, we're, yeah, all, we're feeling all feeling it, it for, for sure. sure. Um, um, thank, thank you for, for sharing, sharing your story, story Gretchel. Gretchel. It was, it was really, really interesting and, and hilarious as, as we knew it would be. be. Um, so so uh, should, we should we close, close with celebrities? celebrities they're, they're not, not just, just like, like us. us. Yes. Um, so, so this story comes, comes to us courtesy of Kirk Cameron of Growing Pains Spain. And if you're under age 35, you might not know who he is. Maybe. I don't know. Um, anyway, anyway, he's a big, big deal, deal in the 90s, 80s, 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 80s probably. Um, anyway, he organized a mask-free caroling protest at a Southern California mall. Apparently there were hundreds of people in attendance. I did see pictures online. All these people are huddled together, no masks, singing, singing. It's, it's almost, almost impossible, impossible not, not to spit on, on someone when you're singing. singing. I mean, if you, you watched watch Hamilton, Hamilton, did you remember, remember the close-up close of the king? king? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so anyway, anyway, this, this took place in Ventura County, County, which saw a surge in COVID, COVID cases after Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving apparently, and they're under strict stay-at-home orders. orders. But he but was, was quoted as saying, um, um, we're, if you're not in the Christmas spirit yet, join us. We're going to be singing Christmas carols by candlelight. It will lift your spirit and it will remind you of our great God-given liberties and constitutional protected rights to gather and assemble and sing about the birth of our Savior. I mean, technically he is correct. We do have the right to gather and assemble. However, those rights are incredibly fragile right now and should not be exercised to the detriment of other people. And, and to me, putting, putting other people, people in harm's, harm's way, way is not, not terribly Christian. Christian. I'm, I'm judging, judging, just saying. Just saying, just saying Kirk. Kirk. Mask, mask up, up stay home. home. He's spreading a lot more than Christmas cheer. I'll say. say. <laughs> super spreader. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Super, super spreader. spreader. So. Yeah. And it's, and it's, he, he also, also was quoted, quoted as saying, if you love God, if you love Christmas, and you love liberty, you're not going to want to miss this. I, for one, would want to miss that. Yes. That is one... Christmas caroling event that I could totally miss. Um, and he's 50. Like, he should know better. Right. And he's an icon-ish. Ish. <laughs> well, he's not. He's not what? I think he's not. He's probably just trying to get, you know, attention. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Um, be relevant yeah. again. But, but it's, it's just, just disappointing. I hope everyone that attended. So did that happen already? So it did. It did. did, it even it did. It yeah. 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 And I mean, I, and I guess I don't know what are the legal ramifications. Like, if, if, if you're under stay at home orders, are there like legal ramifications if you don't? Well, I guess not. I mean, I don't know if they can arrest you or they can find you or I'm not sure. But yeah, I think they can find you. Okay. Gavin Newsom, as the governor of California, if you're under stay-at-home orders, I bet you the cops could have busted that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, page six didn't get into that, no. but they could have busted that, even though it was a safe program. Right. But I bet, if I had to guess, I would say that the police would probably stay away from anything to do with religion. Yeah. Because that's, that's a protected right as well. Yeah. So, so they probably were there. Yeah. They probably just didn't do much. But I'm, I'm sure, sure they, they had, had their masks on. Right? right? Who, wants Who wants to, to get, get close, close to those COVID, COVID carolers? carolers. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're going to do that, oh my God, so my two cents, I probably were off time. But um, if you're going to attend to that Caroline, be my guest, sign, sign a form. Yeah. If you get sick, you don't get to go to the hospital. Right. right. You don't get to, we don't get to steal, steal that spot for that grocery 
health care, that, that health yep. worker or that gross person that had no choice but to get out and risk their life. Yep. Yep. That's my just agree. Yeah, so exactly. Sign an affidavit. You are not allowed any rest in any any hospitals or any medication or whatever. You're agreed. Right. Right. Sign, mm-hmm. up, sign up and have it. Yep. Yep. Tough, Tough love, love Rachel. Rachel. Love it. <laughs> oh my god, you see? Yeah. I so. love it. <laughs> this was so awesome, guys. Thank you for so having for us. For everyone out there, remember, remember it's important that words, words like diversity and inclusion and do, do not, not fall on deaf ears. ears. They are also um they also aren't just part of the corporate culture. They are part of all of our worlds. Even if you live in a suburb where there isn't a huge amount of diversity, it's important to talk about it, seek it out, and expose your children to it. Because it's a much larger world out there, and they are going to be exposed to it sooner or later. College, post-school, work, they are going to get exposed one way or the other, and they're going to have to deal with it. And it will be a reflection on how on you on how they do. So let's continue continue to raise raise good humans humans as best best we can. Mm -hmm. Gretchel, thank you so much for being our guest and talking talking about this important important subject. subject. Thank you for having me. This was such a privilege. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time, your energy, and your input. We love you so much. Yes. Please subscribe, rate, review on iTunes, and you can find us on multitaskinginheels.com or Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, and YouTube YouTube under under the same same handle. handle. Thank Thank you for for listening. listening. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.